What's going on? A little foggy. Yeah, a little foggy. The Crixus. How about the Crixus? The Crixus. The Crixus. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. The Crixus. Right? You get the tank, an extra head, some cotton, and underneath this card, it's a lovely display case. Underneath this lovely card, which shows you how to clean and uh, wick your coils, right? Which, uh, which uh, yeah, anywho. Extra piece of glass. Taking the tank apart, though, if you have to replace that piece of glass, is no easy task. It's easy, but it's not easy. I will show you exactly what I mean. It requires a tool. You just can't. You just can't do it with your hands. You get some uh, Japanese organic strips in here that are supposedly cut to length. I'm gonna wick one for you after we dry burn it. It's gonna take a minute. There's a bunch of little strips in there. I've taken two out of there. I just find it easier to use my pads that I've already got up there. I've got a head here that. Uh, has nothing in it right now just the ceramic yeah it's burnt up she's a crispy critter yes she is this is the one that I wicked with some uh, mesh and cotton uh, that worked out quite well actually that's a whole new story right there so you get this beautiful looking uh, Crixus tank I do like the looks of it. It's really nice. It says uh, Horizon Tech up there on the top. All right. It's got your uh, airflow slots. There's uh, three of them. Three of them. Four of them. Four of them going around there. So, uh, and if you do uh, turn this to the correct spot, she'll whistle like nobody's business. So don't turn it there. Okay. Okay. Got a lovely 510 pin does have a number on the bottom there. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> Dare to be wrong. I do like the drip tip. The drip tip, having that uh, Delrin on the inside, and uh, there's just basically a sleeve that they're both like press fit together. You, I can't get them apart. So I'm going to call them press fit together. Heat expanded, contracted on there, glued on, however it's put on there. The drip tip is the only part of this that doesn't get hot. If you chain vape this bad boy, uh, you will not be able to touch it for quite a few minutes, especially if you have to uh, put some juice back in your tank that it eats. It eats juice like nobody's business. It eats batteries like nobody's business. I have never had a tank, no matter what stupid build I've put on it, go through batteries as fast as this. Now uh, take the base off in your head sits into the base just like uh, an Atlantis just like you know, crank, I crank this stuff down. I heard reviews about this leaking it only happens to me if I lay it on the side. If I leave it on the device upright no leaks no problems. Lay it on its side though and these uh, juice flow holes, even with max VG in them, uh, will allow your juice to just escape. Escape, as Dory would say. Yeah, I pulled out the old Dory. Nice, big, right? Look at that. You can see right through that. If my hand wasn't in the way, you'd see light right through that. See my hand? Look at that. Huge airflow. Now, I'm trying to get this apart. With just your hands, ain't gonna cut it. It's not gonna work. Now I can take the top off. Take the top off. Here's the top. That's how you fill it up, right? Just pour it in one or the other. It doesn't matter. Do it quickly because there's no juice flow control on this either. So hopefully you empty your tank out. Pretty damn empty before you fill it up and then squirt your juice in as fast as you can and top it because it is either going to gurgle or it's going to pee out 
just a little bit until the vacuum comes back. Now, grab the old uh, ritual. Yeah, it's upside down. The old ritual towel. And I'm not going to be able to do it. Just not going to be able to do it. So, we use the towel on the bottom portion. Get out the handy dandy needle nose and stick it in that juice fill. And turn it with ease. There's no gripping on here. It is a pain in the butt to take this apart. I'm glad I don't have to do it. I've cleaned the tank a whopping one time since I've got it. Take the top off. Take the bottom off. Sometimes the silicone uh, sticks to it right there. And stick it back together. Now, I have also been, because I've heard about the leaking issues, when I do take this apart, I put it back together the same way. I don't crank it down either. That's it. That's it. Just It's snug. It stopped right there. And I can't get it apart with my hands. There's just nothing to grip. Nothing to grip. All right. That's what we got here. Now, as long as the base is off, and I have this one sitting right here, all right? We're going to screw this bad boy on, and uh, we're going to show you on the SIG, because the SIG, let me get a vape in before we do this. Lovely. SP ain't gonna watch this, but I'm loving I'm loving your juice, man. SP. Alright. Now, do not dry burn these over 30 watts. Now, there's a reason for that. I'm at 64 right now. That's just not gonna do. Down to 30. Come on. Yeah, I've been doing it at whatever, 29, whatever it stops at. That's good enough. At uh, 29.2, if you look at it, it's going to show you it's 0.3 resistance. Okay? Remember that. It's 0.3 resistance. Now, the reason you only want to dry burn this at 30 is because you are going to end up burning out the rubber grommet down there. I don't know if you can tell that, but it is heating up. I can kind of see it in the video. But, if you look at it, it doesn't all heat up. There are portions of this that the tungsten doesn't go through the ceramic. And uh, we'll do a couple more here. You notice when I'm dry burning this, I'm going to show you this in a second. She's all the way up to 0.8 resistance. Alright? So, TC mode, people. TC mode. Alright? We'll let her cool down. And you'll see that she's almost gone back to white. I could probably just uh, flake that off a little bit if I wanted. But, it's 99% white. Okay, this is going to be super hot now, so don't mind me while I don't use my fingers to take this off, because it is, I can feel it on the base, it's super hot. Now all you have to do is re-wick it, but uh, let's save that for the end portion, we'll save that for the end portion. Alright, I'm going to set this off to the side. This has got to cool down, and I don't edit, and you all know I don't edit. All right? All right. Let's see. Pull the base off. And both heads, I have three heads. Both heads that uh, I have tried, I haven't pulled the third one out, are uh, 0.3. And I've noticed, I'll just put it out there right now, I've noticed that on the Snow Wolf, yes, the Snow Wolf version 1 has been my device of choice for this. Why? Because it works so well. Now, get on there like you're supposed to. It does have kind of a long threading. Look at this. It's not horrible, but 
the threads on it are they just they're longer than they need to be but it does sit flush down on the snow wolf of course the snow wolf has that weird bevel but eh, everything I've screwed it down to it fits flush on but it is what it is we're gonna throw some uh, SP customs treasure trove which is an 80 VG juice right up on in there alright and uh, just pour it in there as fast as your little heart can take no problems because even if you're dry a little bit when you squish this grommet back down it's gonna push juice into the tank and into the coil head and all that lovely stuff now snow wolf let's see here oh focus Daniel focus one focus it says 0.31 if it dims out any time here 0.31 I have this set to 300 degrees and 73 watts because 73 watts what do I care 73 watts okay it is what it is put the top on it move we'll vape on it okay, it's gurgling just a touch That gurgle doesn't usually go away unless I make it go away. Like uh, tapping it on a rag just to make sure any juice that's in the bottom part making it gurgle does what it's supposed to do. Now if you can read this which is really hard to do but it says 0.52 now if the resistance is running between 0.52 on this and 0.53 or below this is a great bait and I can chain bait the crap out of it it's already warm it's not too warm that I can't touch it but it is warm right now Now, that 0.53 right now. When it starts getting to uh, 0.55, it's drying out. There's just no way around it. It happens usually when the tank is full because there's not enough air bubble in there to take up the pressure and all that jazz. Okay, it hasn't happened to me yet when it's when it's gotten down to the chimney part down there, all the way down. But when it's full, there's times that the resistance will go up because it's too dry. Just as simple as that. Now, why I'm running it on here is because of the TC mode. The TC mode will limit it. And 300 degrees seems perfect for me. If I put this on the SIG, it won't stop firing so I have to figure out a, a wattage to set it at right that's great so I figure out a wattage at the point three to set it at the only problem is the ohms is gonna change which means the power output is gonna go up yeah the power output is gonna go up it's gonna raise in voltage and the more you chain vape it the higher the voltage is gonna wanna go each time you drag on it which means I would have to turn my mod down each time I drug on it until I set it down again and now it's going to be too low to vape on and I'm not going to get a quality vape out of it I'll have to turn it up now I've turned it up I start vaping on it oh this is great all of a sudden it's too high again so I gotta turn it down who wants to fool with that I'm just gonna throw it on the snow wolf TC mode it doesn't kick me out of TC mode no matter how long I vape Still in TC mode. See? You can tell because the wattage changes every time I push the button. Cool beans? Cool beans. Uh, this might be a little long. All in all, a great tank if you have a TC mod or you don't mind changing your wattage every couple of puffs.
up or down depending. It gets too hot, it's going to dry out. It can't keep up if it's too hot. Nothing can, right? Nothing can. All right, let's let's roll that beautiful bean footage out of the way right there. All in all, I am highly enjoying the Crixus. Um, if you're interested, they are out there. They're like thirty bucks. Not bad for something that the coil itself is supposed to last six months on. Six months. You just rewick it with less cotton than they actually give you. Let me wipe this off. Stills has juice on the head. Now, wickedness. What do you do to wick it? Well, let me tell you what I do to wick it. One of these strips has got to go. Why? Because it's too thick. So one of the outside layers has to go. Just take one of the layers off, leaves you with a nice poofy piece. Now, it probably doesn't matter which way you go. I have been going the route of, and I like to go with the threads. So, we got to go this way. Okay? It's hard to see what I'm doing. Because I don't have a cam that does this. You know, I don't have a cam that does this. But, if you wrap around and get it where it's supposed to be, sorry, that's all you need. You see that extra? This is all you need. One wrap. That's it. Any more than that, and you're going to be running 50 50 in here. Trust me, I've done this quite a few times. The first head I rewicked so many times wasn't even funny. Just gonna take that bit off. Just leaves you enough to overlay and try to get it nice and tight because it will fluff up after everything is said and done. Yeah, doing this on cam don't work very well. Doing this on cam does not work very well. Always prime your heads, spin it round, spin it round. Prime your heads, the top just screws on, and voila, you have a freshly wicked coil head that is not going to dry out as soon as you hit it. Prime your heads, prime your heads. Any more than that, and you're going to have to run thinner juice. You can see I put that, uh, yeah, over there. I put that little tutorial thing up so you could actually kind of see it. But they use that whole strip in there. It doesn't work well. Um, it works well if all you're running is 50-50 or thinner. Uh, Max VG will just dry out if you use that whole wad. So take a strip off. Overlay just go once around. That's it. Cut it off just so it overlays just a touch. Gives you that little extra room of enjoyment right there. Mm, enjoyment. We like enjoyment around here, right? And that is exactly how this one right here is wicked. This is only the first time I re-wicked this head. This is like the twelfth time I've re-wicked this head, and I've used the full amount. I've used too much. I've used, uh, yeah, like way too much. Um, I've used too little, and uh, I used mesh in it, and mesh was surprisingly really clean. I put mesh in it about, uh, well, you saw this strip, right? That big old strip. Here's my mesh. I coiled it up first, cut it down to length. And it's, yeah, I'm pinching it a little bit because it's still curled, you know, still curled. It's just a little bit longer than this, just enough to wrap around it a few times. That was really, really, really clean. Not to say that the cotton itself isn't clean. It was just a touch better, just a touch better.
I get full flavor from this. I get a nice wafting cloud. I mean, there's the dripper. Got the dripper. Same juice. Oh, I got to turn this back up. This is the velocity dual coil in here? What's in here? Uh, pair of Claptons is in here. All right. Let's see. There's hardly any juice in here, so. I know this is about the Crixus, but we're just going to show you. Pour some juice in here. Right? Now, go up to say 56 watts. Sure, 56 watts. There is not much difference between that and this. And my Clapton's had to actually ramp up a little bit. The ramp up time is not bad on this. I did notice the ramp up time is a little bit longer on the Sigeli. And that's basically because it's not a TC mod. So it doesn't do that pulse of give me power and then take me down. It just give me some power, man. All right. Yeah, you know, that deal. I will, for goodness sakes. What am I running this at? Let's see here. 5.5 volts it averages out to. Alright. We heated it up. If we do this really, really fast. Oh, the tank's so warm already. It's not too hot to the touch. It gets really hot, though, when it gets lower. Really hot when it gets lower. Screw this on really fast, so maybe it'll still say whatever. Nope, it went to 0.3. Alright, we're going to start it at... 5.4. We're at 5.4. See that? 0.3 it's reading. Kind of weak. Now it's reading 0.4. It's at 5.9 volts. 0 0.4. 5.7. It's staying right around there right now. I can tell that one's too hot. 5.8 volts. It's just... It's got to be running TC to enjoy it. Otherwise, you're going to be playing with your settings, and uh, who wants to do that, right? Who wants to do that? So around 30 bucks, you can pick up this tank. If you got a TC mod, it's awesome. No, not a new atomizer. Back to being the wonderful vape that it's meant to be, right there. Beautiful. I recommend the I recommend the tank if uh, you got a TC mod. If uh, you're thinking about putting it on your iStick, stick, it will kill your iStick stick in a couple of hours. Well, an iStick stick fifty. I don't have a hundred or anything like that, but uh, you know. It kills these batteries. These were fresh. Right when I started the video, and it's just starting to drop off just a hair right now. And that's what, 20 vapes in? If I'm chain vaping it, it only lasts a few hours. Dual 18650s. Um, I got the Dookie Browns in here right now. That's what I got for you. Thumbs up if you've got TC mode. That's what I got for you. Crixus, go check it out. Uh, maybe I'll link uh, My Vapor Store in the description. My Vapor Store, why not? My Vapor Store comes to mind. Let's link My Vapor Store. That might even be where I bought it from. Who knows? Y'all have fun now, because I know I will.